Hey everyone, this is Aubrey from Piece by Piece Living and today I'm going to show you how to make chicken pesto pasta salad. Now I kind of call it salad only because I have vegetables in it but it's really high carb so technically it's not a salad but whatever. So this is my mom's recipe. Everybody loves it. I modified it slightly to what I think tastes a little bit better. I like my um, pesto to be really strong so I added a little bit more than my mom. So this is a great side dish for like a family party or a barbecue, birthday party, whatever. Um, for dinner, I guess if you are not watching your carb intake, if you're keto, like you probably don't want to make this. Um, but this pasta is really good. It's delicious. It does have a lot of vegetables. It's very balanced. So let's go ahead and make this chicken pesto pasta salad. Here are some of the ingredients that I'm starting out with. I've got some broccoli, garlic, some mushrooms, tomatoes, chicken, pasta shells. Um, I have red wine vinegar, mayonnaise, cheese. There's a whole bunch of ingredients. They're all really easy to find. And most people actually will probably have most of these ingredients on hand. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut up my raw broccoli. I'm just going to take the stem off and then cut the broccoli into bite-sized pieces. If you wanted to, you actually could just peel the stem a little bit and chop it up into like little cubes and that would be a nice crunch in the salad as well. But for today, I decided to just go with the broccoli florets. Now I'm going to move on to cutting my mushrooms. I've already washed my mushrooms. I know people say you shouldn't wash your mushrooms and you should just wipe them down, uh, but I just can't because if I get one piece of dirt, I, I just, I get grossed out. So you're going to cut your mushrooms just into little like slivers, little slices. You could also cut them up into cubes if you like that as well. And really you could use whatever mushrooms you like. Next, you're just gonna add a few cloves of garlic. I think I'm adding about two or three. My mom adds a lot more to her pasta and hers is really garlicky. Um, I put a little bit less of garlic because I, I don't want it to be super overpowering taste of garlic, but just a few garlic cloves is delicious. At this point, you just wanna get a very large bowl and add your vegetables. This will make it easier to mix everything together. If your bowl's too small, it just won't work. You could also, if you wanted to save some time, chop all these vegetables in advance and just leave them in a bowl inside your fridge. I forgot I wanted to add some olives, so I'm just opening up a can. You could also add some artichoke hearts. That would be really delicious. Or you could add in some chopped up bell peppers, jalapeno, I don't know, any vegetable that you like, you can add in at this point. Now I'm gonna mix together the pesto sauce, starting with some garlic, and then I'm gonna move on to my mayonnaise, as well as my pesto that I purchased from Trader Joe's. So I'm adding a few tablespoons of that Trader Joe's pesto. You can add as much as you want. If it's not enough, just add a little bit more. I not only go for taste, but also the color of my pesto mixture. I like mine to be a little bit on the dark green side. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, but not too much because you have salt in the pesto and the cheese. Here you can see some red wine vinegar. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of that. It'll add a nice flavor and a tang to the pasta sauce. And then you just wanna mix the mixture together really well until everything's incorporated. If you feel like your mixture is not green enough or it doesn't taste like pesto, you can always add just a few more tablespoons or teaspoons till you get the desired taste and color. I'm also gonna add some cheddar cheese. This is a mild cheddar cheese. You could add a sharp cheddar cheese, really whatever cheese that you like. You could add mozzarella, you could add sheep cheese, goat cheese, whatever you fancy. I just feel like mostly everyone enjoys mild cheddar cheese, so this is kind of a safe option for everybody to eat. You just wanna cut your cheese into bite-sized cubes. 
You could also do this in advance just to save a little bit of extra time. Next, I'm moving on to cutting my chicken breasts. I made these chicken breasts inside my Instant Pot. I just put the chicken breasts, a cup of water, and then I cooked it at high pressure for 12 minutes. After that, I put the chicken breasts in the fridge to cool completely. You could also make this a day or two in advance, that way it's ready to go. Or you could purchase a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store and save yourself some extra time. Here is the very last step. You're gonna get your large bowl of your vegetables, and then you're gonna add first your pesto sauce, and then on top of that, you're gonna add your chicken, and then you're gonna add your pasta. I originally was planning on making the whole 16 ounce bag of pasta, but I found that it was just a little bit too much pasta. So in this recipe, I actually have you use about three quarters of the bag. If you want to do the whole bag of pasta, that's completely fine. You might just wanna add a little bit more broccoli and a little bit more of the pesto sauce. And now you just wanna keep stirring everything until all of the ingredients are fully incorporated together. I'm pretty satisfied with this consistency, so I'm not gonna add any more pesto. However, I will save the remainder pesto and use it if I find that later on my pasta is a little bit too dry after I put it in the fridge, because normally the pasta does soak up some of the sauce, so you might wanna save some of the sauce so that you can add it later on. All right, everyone, so here is my chicken pesto pasta salad. This is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and give this a try. I've got my broccoli, my noodles, my pesto, tomatoes, a little bit of cheese, chicken, and then the olives. So. It's really good. Mm -mm. This would also taste really good after it's been chilled. So, if you're going to a family barbecue, birthday party or you're just making a really good dinner. This is an excellent side dish. It's really delicious and easy to make. So I hope you try it. Thank you. Bye.